Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and today let's paint a forest scene, but we're gonna do it with some cartoon-influenced rendering. Now, when you look at the final example, you might think, oh, this is kind of complicated. That might be too much for me. But really, this rock is gonna kind of sum up what we're doing here. I am gonna separate the painting into three components. There's line art, there's shadows, and there's colors all of which can be on their own layer, which means I can manipulate them one at a time. And this is really nice, because if I want to change my shadow, for instance, I can erase away part of my shadow, and the color is left intact. Alternately, I could add more color, and it would not be affected by the shadows. They're sort of different components, and you can think of them individually. So for this video, we are going to forget shadows for now. We are just going to think of this as if it's a coloring book. So we start with the lines, and we're gonna end up filling in the flat colors. So thinking of this like a coloring book, the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is the background flat colors. So I'll make a new layer inside of my flats background set, and every stroke I do in this series is just gonna be paint a little, erase away what I don't want, and then flatten it down. I call these temp layers. So I'm just gonna fill in the background and add a few trees, And at this point, I'm done with the background. So I can flatten all these down to a single layer and just collapse that set, because for now I'm going to ignore it. The next step is to do the exact same process, but for the middle ground. Now what I said I was doing is essentially like a coloring book, but you can find that using the layer stack to your advantage will make this a lot easier. So for the first example, I want to paint this rock right here. And I'm going to use that to clean up the edges of the branch. So I'll select a color on a new layer. I'll start painting it in. So I'm both simultaneously painting the rock, but I'm also covering up and sort of cleaning up the edge of that root and of the tree bark. So in that way, I'm using the layer stack to my advantage. And I can flatten those two together. So now they are a single layer once again. Now, another thing that might happen is I might have already painted a root very nicely here. And I want to paint these negative shapes that are sort of underneath the root. Well, a great way to do that is to make a new layer, drag it lower on the layer stack, and just paint it right underneath. So here I'm taking advantage of the fact that I already painted that root with very careful edge control. And so now I can just paint right underneath it and not have to worry about staying inside the line so much. And I can flatten those together once again. So here I'm speeding up the footage because, well, let's face it, this is just repetitive. But the important thing to take away from this is that I'm using the layer stack to my advantage. I'm painting above certain layers when it makes sense to do so, and sometimes I paint underneath certain layers. It all depends on edge control, and you really just get a sense for that the more you paint. But it's the same process over and over. Paint a few strokes, erase away what you don't want, flatten it down. It's really very straightforward. Now, if we take a look at the line art here, it's still gray. And in my opinion, that's not very exciting. And especially if you're painting organic objects, it can be really nice to use colored line art. Well, since these lines are made on their own layer, I can lock transparent pixels, which means that they will not change shape. And I'm just gonna put in a different color. So just to show as a very vibrant example, I could make this a red line, which would have a very different effect on the way this looked. That might be what you're going for. I think I'm going to go a little darker and a little more orange. And so now the tree has sort of a softer quality, which is a bit nicer for organic objects. I could then do different colors for different areas of the canvas. And I can paint with big strokes, and I don't have to worry about going outside of those lines. Okay, so now we are finished with the flat color phase of the illustration. But to get to this point, we needed to understand a few different things. We painted with temp layers, which is where you're brushing and erasing in equal measure, and then flattening them back down into the layer stack. We worked with layer groups, which helped us stay a little bit more organized. 
and I planned out ahead of time how to separate this image into foreground and background, which is just going to help me sort of keep some order to the image as I'm working with it. So if any of those techniques are unfamiliar to you, make sure to follow the links at the bottom of the video and you can learn more about them. And in the next video, we are going to continue by putting in shadows and adding a few final touches. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.